China has just dealt a devastating blow to Intel, a move years in the making. Beijing has now officially banned all foreign-made chips from government systems, cutting off Intel and AMD overnight. Instead, China is going all in on its homegrown processors from Huawei and SMIC. And this isn't just about technology. It's about control, independence, and survival in the global tech war. What seemed impossible just five years ago is now reality. China has achieved chip self-sufficiency at the highest levels of government. And the ripple effects could reshape the future of Intel and the global tech order. For decades, Intel was the gold standard of computing power. The beating heart inside nearly every Chinese government server, university data center, and corporate machine. But that era is now over. In a stunning and calculated move, Beijing has quietly banned all foreign-made processors from government systems, effectively cutting Intel and AMD out of one of their most important markets overnight. This isn't just another trade policy, it's a strategic decoupling, the culmination of years of frustration, sanctions, and a desire for technological independence. The official order, leaked through several Chinese ministries, requires all government institutions and state-owned enterprises to phase out American chips and replace them with domestic alternatives. And those alternatives are no longer prototypes. They're ready. At the center of this revolution are Huawei's Kunpeng processors and SMIC's latest chipsets, both developed under enormous international pressure. Five years ago, few believed China could produce competitive chips at scale. Today, Huawei's ARM-based CPUs are running everything from servers to AI clusters, while SMIC, despite US sanctions, has mastered advanced lithography processes without access to ASML's EUV machines. The message from Beijing is clear. China no longer wants to rely on the West for critical technologies. Every new ban or export restriction from Washington has only accelerated its determination. Now, that determination has crystallized into a policy, one that directly targets the foundation of America's semiconductor dominance. For Intel, this is catastrophic. The company generated billions of dollars annually from Chinese clients, many of them government-related. Those contracts were stable, predictable, and formed a significant part of Intel's data center business. Losing them not only hits revenue, it undermines confidence in Intel's global reach. Investors know this is more than just lost sales. It's the loss of influence in one of the largest tech markets on Earth. But while Western analysts call this a retaliation, Chinese media is framing it differently, as a rebirth. They argue that this is the final step toward full technological sovereignty. In their narrative, Huawei and SMIC are not merely replacements. They are symbols of resilience. The government's adoption of domestic chips sends a powerful signal to private industry. Follow our lead, invest in local innovation, and together we'll break free from foreign control. Meanwhile, Intel faces an uncomfortable question. How do you compete with a country that has decided it no longer needs you? And as this story unfolds, the implications reach far beyond Intel's stock price. This is about power, digital power, and who controls the next era of computing. If you're new here, subscribe to stay ahead of the biggest shifts shaping global technology and economics. What's happening in China right now could redefine the balance of power between East and West. And this is just the beginning. China's path to cutting off Intel didn't happen overnight. It was a masterclass in long-term strategy. While the West was busy tightening export controls and sanctioning key suppliers, Beijing quietly built an entire semiconductor ecosystem from the ground up. What we're seeing now is the result of more than a decade of relentless investment, planning, and, most importantly, learning from its technological isolation. When the U.S. first restricted Huawei's access to American chips in 2019, it looked like the end for China's most advanced tech company. Huawei's smartphone division was nearly crippled, and its AI ambitions stalled. But instead of collapsing, the company reinvented itself. Under massive government support, Huawei redirected its talent and resources toward chip design, launching the Kunpeng and Ascend processors built on ARM and domestic architectures. At the same time, 
China doubled down on SMIC, Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, its homegrown chip foundry, despite lacking access to extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography machines from ASML, SMIC managed to achieve production nodes comparable to early 7 nanometer technology using older deep ultraviolet DUV systems. Western experts said it was impossible, yet SMIC engineers proved that necessity truly is the mother of invention. Then came the state's master stroke, the Xinchuang program, roughly translated as IT application innovation. This initiative mandated that all critical government and enterprise IT infrastructure must transition to domestic hardware and software by 2027. Step by step, ministries, banks, energy firms, and telecom operators began replacing Intel and AMD-powered servers with Chinese alternatives. By the time the West realized what was happening, the foundation had already shifted. The result? Today, Huawei's processors are powering government data centers across China. SMIC's factories are expanding capacity, fueled by billions in subsidies and local demand. And Chinese universities are graduating tens of thousands of engineers, trained specifically for semiconductor research and AI computing. This transformation wasn't just technical, it was ideological. Beijing saw semiconductors not as a business, but as the new oil of the digital era. Whoever controls the chips controls the future. And after decades of depending on US technology, China decided that dependence was no longer acceptable. Intel, meanwhile, underestimated how quickly China could adapt. Even as Chinese companies stockpiled American chips in 2022 and 2023, they were quietly building replacements. The writing was on the wall, but few in Silicon Valley wanted to believe it. The bottom line, China turned sanctions into motivation. By weaponizing its own market size and national strategy, it achieved what many thought impossible technological self-reliance in the world's most complex industry. For Intel, the timing couldn't be worse. The company was already fighting to regain its edge after years of delays, missed opportunities, and fierce competition from AMD and NVIDIA. Now, losing China, a market that once accounted for nearly 27% of its global revenue, threatens to upend its recovery plans entirely. In recent years, Intel has poured billions into building new fabs in Arizona, Ohio, and Europe, hoping to reclaim leadership in chip manufacturing. But these facilities take years to come online and depend heavily on global demand. Demand that is now shrinking as China withdraws from US suppliers. Without Chinese government orders, Intel's data center and AI group could lose a critical stream of revenue that helped fund its costly expansion. The stock market has already started to react. Analysts on Wall Street are calling this move a potential black swan for U.S. semiconductors. Intel shares have been under pressure, while investors are questioning whether the company can remain competitive in a world where political decisions override pure market logic. And make no mistake, this isn't just Intel's problem. The U.S. semiconductor industry as a whole is feeling the heat. AMD faces similar risks. Even NVIDIA, which dominates AI chips, knows that China's next step could target its data center GPUs, forcing Beijing to rely solely on Huawei's Ascend lineup. Politically, the move exposes a painful irony. Washington's export controls were designed to slow down China's tech rise, but instead, they forced Beijing to accelerate domestic innovation. Every new sanction became a catalyst. Now China has reached a point where it can say, we don't need your chips anymore, and actually mean it. The ripple effects extend far beyond corporate profits. The US? China tech rivalry has officially entered a new phase, one defined not by dependence, but by separation. Tech decoupling is no longer a prediction, it's policy. And that means the future of the global semiconductor industry will be split in two. One ecosystem led by the US, the other by China. For Intel, this is more than a financial setback. It's an identity crisis. A company that once symbolized American innovation now finds itself locked out of the world's second largest economy. The question is no longer whether China can catch up. It's whether Intel can survive in a market that no longer plays by its rules. What's happening right now isn't just a corporate dispute. It's the birth of a bipolar tech world. For decades, the global technology industry operated under a single, interconnected system. Chips designed in California, manufactured in Taiwan, and assembled in China, 
powered everything from iPhones to supercomputers. But that global chain is breaking apart, and the Intel ban marks a point of no return. China's strategy goes beyond simply replacing foreign chips. It's creating an entire parallel ecosystem, from processors and operating systems to software platforms and cloud infrastructure. Huawei's Harmony OS, Euler OS, and Kunpeng processors are being fused into a unified digital ecosystem, one that can operate entirely without American technology. Inside China, it's already working. Local governments, banks, and even military contractors have migrated to these Qin Chuang trusted innovation systems. Meanwhile, Western companies are finding themselves locked out, not just of contracts, but of influence. Once, Intel and Microsoft shaped the digital backbone of China. Now, Beijing's approach to cybersecurity and sovereignty means that every critical digital component must be controllable and secure. Code words for domestically made and government approved. The implications go far beyond China's borders. Emerging economies across Asia, Africa, and the Middle East are watching closely. Many of them depend heavily on affordable technology, and Huawei and SMIC are now offering that at competitive prices. As Chinese chips become cheaper and more capable, we could see a new wave of tech alignment, where developing nations choose the Chinese ecosystem over Western alternatives, not for ideology, but for practicality. This divide will reshape everything, from AI development frameworks to cloud computing standards. Western AI runs on NVIDIA and CUDA, Chinese AI increasingly runs on Ascend and Mindspore. That means future innovations, from robotics to defense, may evolve in two incompatible worlds. The digital iron curtain is already here. For global trade, that's a nightmare. For Beijing, it's the goal. China's message is simple. If you shut us out, we'll build our own world. And they have. In the coming years, companies and countries will be forced to choose not just which chips to buy, but which future to belong to. Intel's fall from grace in China marks more than just the loss of a customer. It marks the end of an era. The age when American tech ruled unchallenged is over. What we're witnessing is the rise of a new global order, one where technological power is divided, contested, and deeply political. China's decision to purge foreign chips isn't only about hardware. It's about control, security, and the right to define its own digital destiny. And for the first time in modern history, the world has a credible alternative to Silicon Valley. For Intel and the West, this moment is a warning. The next breakthroughs in AI, semiconductors, and communications may not come from California, but from Shenzhen, Shanghai, or Chengdu. The center of innovation is shifting eastward, fast. Whether that future becomes one of cooperation or confrontation will define the next decade. But one thing is certain, the world will never go back to the way it was. If you want to stay ahead of these massive global shifts, from chip wars to economic power plays, subscribe to the channel, leave a like, and share this video. The technology battle is just getting started, and we'll be here to break it all down.